Hey guys, so canola oil. It's rich in omega-3, it's low in saturated fat, and so, no surprise, scientific consensus is that it is a healthy choice for dietary fat. The only caveat is that you probably shouldn't fry with it due to its lower oxidative stability. That just means that when it's exposed to air at high temperatures, it may oxidize a bit. This changes the oil a little and may also release oxidated substances into the air that can increase the risk of lung cancer if inhaled. In the latter case, it's good enough to use a vent hood. It's not entirely clear what health risks oil oxidation may result in, and the risk is reduced by antioxidants like TBHQ added to the oils, but it's something you can avoid by using a more stable oil like olive oil or high oleic safflower oil for pan frying. And then use canola oil for things like salad dressings, sauces, and probably baked goods as well, so then you get the benefits with none of the risks. You usually won't see this represented in mainstream messages you know, on health and on fat because it's more speculative, and also because the message on fat intake and cooking fat is already pretty complicated. And that should really be the end of this video, but it's not. Canola oil is banned in the EU. No, it isn't. It's just called rape oil there. Canola oil is used to lubricate machines, make pesticides, paint, soap, etc. Okay, any oil can be used for these things, particularly lubrication and as a pesticide. That doesn't mean it's not healthy to eat. As hydrocarbons, any vegetable or animal oil can be broken down into any number of industrial chemicals and precursors, and biological feedstocks like canola, corn, and soy are often more environmentally friendly to make products from. If you avoid eating things because they have industrial uses, you're not going to have anything left to eat. Canola oil is genetically modified. Canola oil was bred from normal rapeseed using traditional breeding methods in Canada in the 1960s. This was done to minimize the amount of erucic acid in the oil. More on that in a minute. The point is, canola oil is not inherently transgenic. There is canola oil from transgenic plants on the market, but like with soy and corn, GMO and non-GMO varieties are available. The modification in this case is to make it resistant to herbicide, which often means that less herbicide has to be used on the plants. There's no reason to believe that genetically modified foods are dangerous. I have a few videos on this if you are interested, but if you are still concerned, you can always buy non-GMO canola oil. It's more expensive, but still cheaper and more stable than flaxseed oil. Canola oil is toxic. Rapeseed oil might be slightly harmful due to its high levels of erucic acid, which may cause changes in heart tissue, but again, canola oil was bred to reduce those levels. They were as high as 54% in rapeseed, but in the US, they're regulated to be under 2% in canola oil. It's often much lower, down to 0.01%. And just to be clear, the harm caused by erucic acid is speculative. It's based on animals eating huge amounts of it. Data from regions of India where mustard oil was consumed, which is also high in erucic acid, does not support a substantial risk in humans, even at 5.6% of total fatty acids. There's also the claim that canola is related to mustard gas. Yes, canola is related to mustard, along with broccoli and other healthy plants in the brassica family, but that doesn't mean these plants are used to make mustard gas. It's made from sulfur dichloride and ethylene, and it only gets its name from smelling somewhat like mustard plants. Brassica plants, including canola, also contain glucosinolates, some of which are mildly toxic in large amounts. But they're also probably responsible for these plants being so healthy one being a precursor to the famed anti-cancer compound, sulforaphane. Love it or hate it, canola oil was bred for lower concentrations of these as well, along with erucic acid. So unless you cook it at high temperatures and expose it to oxygen so that it oxidizes, there's nothing harmful in canola oil. And even the oxidation thing is controversial. Canola oil is processed with toxic chemicals. Not for cold pressed and expeller pressed oils which undergo mechanical pressure to squeeze the oil out of the seeds. But most canola oil, and most oils in general, is created via chemical extraction. Chemical solvents are used to dissolve the oils and then are boiled off. With good manufacturing practices, the vast majority of the solvent is removed, but not quite all of it. There are concerns about there being traces of these solvents left, like hexane, and it's true that these solvents are pretty bad for you, 
but the real question is one of dose. Harvard Health has a good article which covers the processing of oil, particularly canola oil. It's been estimated that refined vegetable oils extracted with hexane contain approximately 0.8 milligrams of residual hexane per kilogram of oil. It's also estimated that the level of ingestion of hexane from all food sources is less than 2% of the daily intake from all other sources primarily gasoline fumes. So hexane is bad for you, but the vast majority of your exposure is from just breathing. It's like people worrying about radiation from diluted nuclear waste when a banana is more radioactive. Put in context, there just isn't evidence for any significant risk. A bigger concern may be the roughly 3% trans fat content that results from the non-chemical deodorization process. However, this is similar for all vegetable oils. And despite this, studies routinely show that canola oil as a dietary fat decreases LDL and reduces risk of heart disease. Although care must be taken in handling and processing of canola oil and other vegetable oils, Canola oil is a safe and healthy form of fat that will reduce blood LDL cholesterol levels and heart disease risk compared to carbohydrates or saturated fats such as found in beef tallow or butter. Indeed, in a randomized trial that showed one of the most striking reductions in risk of heart disease, canola oil was used as a primary form of fat. Whether using cold-pressed canola oil provides some small additional benefit is not clear. So just like with the GMO issue, if this is something that you are worried about, you can always buy cold or expeller pressed canola oil. So I think that's it. I think I touched on all of the uh, anti canola oil claims or con oil. Very, very clever. Uh, other, other than just the overall anti oil message that some people spread, as I talked about in uh, a recent video on oil responding to Mike the Vegan. Check that out if you haven't seen it. I do want to say I find it interesting the difference in sources. So on the like, pro canola oil side, like, yeah, canola oil is fine. It's healthy, reduces LDL, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I mean, of course you have canola industry, but you also have like academia, like Harvard, Berkeley. And then on the anti-canola oil side, you have the healthy home economist and Dr. Axe and food renegade. And of course, Mercola. Oh, you cut. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope the lighting was okay this time. I usually record at night so that lighting is consistent, um, but I hate recording at night because I'm always tired. <laughs> I just don't want to record. It's easier to record during the daytime when baby is napping, but it also means there's a window and if the sun goes away, then the lighting changes and that may just be too obnoxious. So let me know if, if it really, really bothers you guys. If, if there are still problems, then I will I'll just keep recording at night. Anyway, thank you so much, guys. Comments and questions down below. If you want to subscribe, of course, that's super dope. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. Again, thank you so much, and I will have a new video very soon. Is it lame that I say dope? <laughs> what about sweet? I say sweet sometimes. Like that, do people still say that? Like I, I read a, I read a thing like yesterday, some headline and I didn't, I didn't know what it meant. It said something about thirsty, thirsty something. And I'd never heard it before. And it was just this realization like, oh, I'm, I'm older now. Oh, <laughs> there are now words and phrases being used by like teenagers. And I don't know what they mean. And I'm not sure how to feel about that. I mean, I hated being a teenager, so I should be happy, but it just means I'm getting old, <laughs> so it's kind of sad.